Spirit, and the Holy Spirit, and God, Amen. May the Lord bestow upon us His blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom now and ever to the age of ages. Today is the fifth Sunday of the blessed month of Abib, and uh, as you know, during the fifth Sunday, we commonly read the Gospel of the Blessing. Um, but it's not the same throughout the whole year. The first half of the year, from to to Amshir or from September uh, to the beginning of March, um, we read from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 6, as we were saying last Sunday. Um, St. John did not repeat a lot of uh, the events that were mentioned in the other three Gospels, <clears throat> but he did repeat some. And, and this was one of the Gospels that, that he uh, added to. Um, and then the second half of the year, we read from the Gospel according to St. Luke, which we also pray in the hour of the Agbeya, the ninth hour, right? <clears throat> um, and so th these are the readings of um, the fifth Sunday. The readings in the first half are, are the readings of the second uh, Sunday of Amshir. Um, <clears throat> so this is what, like we said, one of the few miracles that are mentioned in all of the four Gospels. Um, and the main theme, obviously, is of recognizing the blessing of the Lord um, in our life. Um, we'll compare this, we'll focus on the, the word blessing today. So what other instance in the gospel was there discussion of blessing and multitudes? So here we have multitudes that are blessed or they eat the food that is blessed by the Lord, right? And there's another instant in the gospel where there are many people, and the Lord speaks to us about blessing. The Sermon on the Mount, when he, and seeing the multitudes, he went up on the mountain, and, and then he said, uh, blessed are the born spirit, <clears throat> and so on and so forth, right? So um, this word blessed is actually um, a loose translation, or inaccurate, as I guess we could say, because there are many words in scripture that are translated into English as blessing. Um, and so can kind, kind of get a lot of, of pretty confusing. Um, there's about, I counted about five, but there might be more. Um, <clears throat> and sometimes even in the church, we use them interchangeably. <clears throat> but I think it's important to go through what those words mean, because we, if we interchange them incorrectly, we could be a bit confused. Um, <clears throat> So, for example, the first one is is a baraka, which we say in Arabic, but it's also from the Hebrew, and it's over 300 times in the Old Testament. And it usually has to do with the physical or the material blessing, um, uh, or that that is seen by everyone. Okay, um, and this is what they were focusing on, especially in the Old Testament, because it was proof, not only to them but to the non-believers, uh, that God was with them. And so God wanted also to show to, to, to the whole world the blessing that he gave to his people. <clears throat> so this had to do with wealth and, and uh, children and lands and so on and so forth. <clears throat> uh, and like I said, it's, it's used very often in scripture. Um, another one, uh, which is commonly found in the Psalms, um, it has to do with the, the emotional result of the person who was physically blessed. Um, or it's translated sometimes as happy, but the little translation means to go straight or to advance or to be successful. Right? <clears throat> so again, this is commonly understood um, in both Old and New Testament. <clears throat> but um, there's three other words uh, that the church likes to use, especially in the New Testament. Um, one is eulogia, the second is esmo, and the third one is makarius. Right? So eulogia, as we know, is we call it the bread that we pass out right, in the church. Sometimes we translate to Arabic and Baraka, but actually eulogia is in a sense better because it means different, right? Um, it just means a good word or the word that comes from God, right? So when we say give us a blessing, usually we're talking about the, the words of the blessing, but what does it do? It makes the thing or the person holy or blessed. Right? <clears throat> so it's, it's, in a sense, a consecration of that specific thing. Okay? Um, or it can also be, it's interchanged with ismo, which means a, a proclamation of the person or the one who is blessed. So like uh, some people will ask in the liturgy, 
why do we say to God, we bless you? How can the lower bless the, the higher? Doesn't make sense. But when, when we look at the word ismo, it can also be translated into praise. So we're praising God, we're not blessing him, okay? But we use the word, um, which again, it's loosely translated in, in, into the word, which, which, but it actually means we're praising God. Um, <clears throat> and that's why we say blessed, but we proclaim his blessing when we say blessed is the Father and the Son of the Holy. He is blessed and he is the source of all blessing. Um, so that's why we shouldn't uh, get confused. <clears throat> um, St. Cyril talks about uh, when the, the Lord... Uh, blessed the, the the five loaves and two fish here. Um, in St. Luke, he says he blessed, right? In St. John, he actually doesn't use that word. He says he gave thanks. And St. Cyril says it's the same thing. Um, uh, and that's why we can use uh, sometimes different words to mean the same concept. That, that we have to take the spirit of, of the teaching, not necessarily the, the letter of the law, <clears throat> or else we can fall into mistakes. So the last word um, is, is makarios, which is uh, a lengthened word, meaning actually a combination of some of the ones that we said before, to be both blessed and happy. Um, <clears throat> and it's more of a spiritual uh, fullness rather than a physical blessing. There is physical blessing attached to it, but not necessarily. And so that's why in this world, we can be blessed by God exceedingly in the spiritual things, but not necessarily in the physical. Um, <clears throat> and so um, that's why this word is, is selected more often to be used in the New Testament. <clears throat> um, and it's in a sense, the Lord is changing the commandments. Like in, so we consider the, the five books of the Old Testament um, the, or, of the law, right? From uh, Genesis to Deuteronomy. Um, equivalent or preparation for the real law, who is the Lord Jesus Christ, um, for, so for the four Gospels. So in the Old Testament, the command was, you shall, thou shalt not do this and that, right? In the New Testament, it was blessed. You, you, uh, so it's, it's transforming the idea of don't do this to you are blessed if you do this, right? <clears throat> And so um, this is the proclamation of the goodness and the happiness and the blessing of the person that walks in the way of Christ. <clears throat> um, so um, that's a big introduction uh, to, to probably a more practical um, question is, well, how can we be more blessed in our lives today? And since we are celebrating or beginning the fast of the Holy Virgin uh, tomorrow, God willing, <clears throat> We consider her the mother of all blessings, right? Because through her, we received uh, the source of, of all blessings. <clears throat> so um, the first thing that we, we have to do is to lay it down at his feet without limitations, without putting limitations on the blessing. <coughs> um, and oftentimes in tribulation, we tend to magnify the problem and to minimize um, or ignore or dismiss the potential solutions. We belittle the blessing that we already have sometimes because it doesn't seem to be enough. Um, the apostles in the gospel of today put limits in God's power because they were looking at the circumstances too much and even making mental calculations. Um, for example, St. Philip says 200 denarii worth of bread is not enough for each of them to eat a little. St. John explains it in his gospel. <clears throat> and then St. Andrew continues saying, uh, we have the five loaves and two, but what are these among so many? So sometimes we do this in our life is we know God is the source of blessings and we know that he has blessed us in our life many times and he is the source of our miracles. But then we look into the details of the problem and say, it's not calculating correctly. Um, there, there's no way that I can get out of this issue. But we focus too much on the problem. We forget about the God, the source of all blessings. Um, Esau did the same thing, right? In Genesis, he looked at the problem that he was hungry and he expected a worst case scenario, I'm going to die, right? Um, and he dismissed the blessing. He said, what's my birthright to me at this point if I'm going to die? Um, so take my birthright, give me the food. Sometimes we do this. 
um, in, in our life. Um, <clears throat> the Israelites did the same thing. <coughs> After the Lord saved them and delivered them from Pharaoh and his army, um, and even gave them the manna from heaven, they began to complain and doubt. Um, and uh, after all the, the miracles that God had performed with them, they forgot when the new problem was before their eyes. Um, and God told them, uh, fine, you want meat? I'll give you meat. And he gave them um, quail. He said, I'm going to give you um, meat not just for one day or two days or 10 days, but 30 for a, for a whole and, and Moses actually even questioned, saying, I'm calculating here, we have over 600,000 men, probably about 2 million total. How are you going to find meat for all of these people? We're in the wilderness. How are you going to find meat for all of these people for 30 days? And God responded, saying, um, has the arm of the Lord been shortened? Are you, are you minimizing the power of the Lord? Um, <clears throat> he said, now you shall see. And of course, God, as we know in the story, um, provided a wind to, to bring up um, quail from the sea um, so much that they spent about a day and a half collecting all, all of the food. And, but this was not, this was the physical blessing, but they weren't spiritually blessed because a lot of them um, did not survive um, because of the gluttony that they had um, partaken. Anyway, um, the idea here is that we should be careful when it comes to the to asking God for blessing, not to overthink uh, things and overcalculate, especially when we're bringing it to his feet. So when you bring something to the feet of the Lord and lay it down, don't put limitation on the power of God. Um, <clears throat> because then we, we limit ourselves to accept the blessing of God. Right? So sometimes, like St. Paul says, you know, just do not despise your youth. Right? So sometimes we despise or we look uh, at the things that we already have as not enough, whether it's our age or our uh, understanding or our um, money or our time or our abilities. And we say, who am I that for God to bless? Well, actually, we're in the perfect situation. If we feel that we have a lot of shortcomings, then God is the one that's going to bless the person who is humble and realizing that I can't do this by myself. Um, <clears throat> so um, even if you don't have a lot, you have to give it to God. And if you don't give it to God, then he won't be able to bless it. Um, whether, again, it's our time or our money um, <clears throat> or um, whatever talents that we have. So when we in enter God into the equation, all things become possible. Uh, and this is where uh, the faith comes in. The Holy Virgin Mary was faithful over the little that she had, um, and she didn't despise it, right? She was not a queen. She was not a priest. She was not a prophet. She was not a Sunday school teacher. She was probably very unknown in, in her life, right? <clears throat> but she was very faithful, and whatever she had, she gave to God fully, right? Whether it was prayer or fasting, it was, it was said you know, in, in the tradition that... Um, in the years, eight or nine years or so that she was in the temple, um, she used to fast a lot. And they used to give her food and she would give it uh, to the poor. And um, it was also said that when she became hungry, the angels used to come and give her food. Uh, um, of course, this is not in um, official, and some other churches have this uh, tradition, um, but it could be very well true. Um, <clears throat> but she was faithful and whatever she had to give to the Lord. Um, even in the scripture, she learned and probably memorized many passages because when we look at the, if you compare Luke chapter one, her, her pray, praise to God, and you compare that with Hannah's praise in First Samuel uh, chapter two, <clears throat> um, she pretty much memorized the prayer and used it as her own um, and you know, uh, modified it very slightly. Um, <clears throat> So this is the faithfulness of the good servant um, that the Lord saw and beheld and wanted to bless more and more and more, more than anyone um, on, on this earth. So uh, that's the first point. The second point is, so the first one, again, is to lay it down at the feet without putting limitations. The second one is to ask even to the point of being annoying. 
Um, so um, St. James says, you do not have because you don't, do not ask. Um, and, uh, and then he says later on in the next verse, you ask and do not receive because you ask and miss that you may spend it on your pleasures. So sometimes when we ask, we ask of the worldly and not the heavenly. Um, we want more for ourselves um, regardless of what we want to give to God. The saints asked for more so that they could give more. Um, for example, um, some of some of the uh, monastic saints they gave all they had, you know, to the poor, and then some of them sold themselves into slavery so they could have money so they could give more, right? Or the ones who were martyred and suffered, they they didn't want just one life to give to the Lord, so the Lord gave them health after all the persecution so that they can offer themselves again to the Lord. Um, so we should be content with what we have and want only want to, to receive more so we can give more. Um, <clears throat> and so that this is the, the, the mental uh, act of wrestling with God for the blessing. <clears throat> um, St. Augustine says, why did Jacob wrestle with, with God and catch him? In order to take him by labor as whatever we get after strife, we hold on to it more strongly. So if we ask with, with perseverance, even to the point of being annoying, of course, we don't annoy God, but this is the, this, the analogy that he gives um, with the persistent widow um, in the gospel. He says, finally, when we get what we, have, what we asked for, we're going to hold on to it. And that's why God doesn't always answer our prayers immediately, because he wants us to persevere and to, and to keep asking. Um, <clears throat> so that when we receive, we, we don't belittle um, the gift that we have received. <clears throat> um, and uh, because of Jacob's persistence or Israel's persistence, the Lord blessed him. Um, uh, St. Mary, the same idea. Um, she asked with perseverance. For example, you know the story of the, the miracle of the at the wedding of Cana of Galilee, um, she presented to the Lord to the problem. She said, it's calculating, it's not working. They don't have any wine. Um, that's all she said. And she knew he was going to do something, even though he said, what? My hour has not come yet. Um, so she persevered in a very faithful and indirect and respectful way. She didn't argue with him. She went to the servants and said, okay, he's going to go do something. Just listen to every word he says and do it. Um, <clears throat> so that act alone shows that she was persevering and that that was a very faithful and respectful way of wrestling with God. Um, <clears throat> and so um, she taught the servants also to learn how to do everything to the teeth of the, from the mouth of the Lord. Um, and this, this type of Faithfulness led to the blessing, the first blessing, the first miracle um, after the Lord was uh, baptized. So again, we have to lay it down at the feet of the Lord without putting limitations. Um, L, right? The second one, we have to ask with almost to the point of being annoying with perseverance. And the third one is we have to manage with mindfulness uh, and faithfulness. <clears throat> So sometimes we have a lot, but we don't manage it wisely. The Lord asked his disciples to, to collect the leftovers and so that it wouldn't be wasted. To remember and to see and to witness that uh, he also told them to what? Put them in groups of 50. And he, he organized everything um, so that not only everyone could be fed, but everyone could see and witness and uh, especially the disciples when they brought everything back, nothing was wasted, they could see the blessing, <clears throat> right? Um, and so we may waste things if we have a lot of time or a lot of money or a lot of anything. Sometimes when, when we are blessed physically, we don't feel the need to manage mindfully, right? But when we realize everything comes from the Lord and we have to be faithful, then um, we, we take every big and little thing um, faithfully. Um, as Solomon says, um, warn, he warns us of the little foxes that spoil the vines. These are the little things that if they are not, even the little sins that are not 
um, managed properly can grow into something worse. So manage the little that you have as if it were much, and God will let you manage the much as if it were little. Um, so um, this is what happened in the story of Joseph the Righteous, right? The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man. Um, and the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. Why? Because he was being very faithful in the little that he had. Um, <clears throat> uh, as the Lord says, he was faithful in the little, is also faithful in much. Um, okay. uh, so that's the third point. The last point is to bring with boldness. Um, the boy gave all that he had without leaving anything behind or keeping anything for himself. The widow who gave the two mites gave everything. Right? And the Lord said, this is the most that anyone has offered because she gave um, in her need and she gave all that she had. Um, Lot had chosen the, the good place, right? And that place was destroyed. Uh, Abraham could have chosen that place as the elder, um, but he gave it to God and ultimately to his, to his nephew to, for him to choose. And we know the story of what happened. Abraham uh, received, how he was the source of blessings, right? So the word blessing, like we said before, means to make holy or to be consecrated. So when we feel that we are consecrated by the Holy Spirit to live a holy and a Christian life, then we're willing to give everything. We already have given up everything for the Lord, but it it's, it's a daily struggle that we have to do. <clears throat> so um, put all that we have in God's hands, not just the 10%, but everything. And see how it will uh, be blessed 30, 60, and 100 fold. Um, <clears throat> so, um, as the proverb says, there is one who scatters, yet increases more. The one who gives, but is receiving a lot. And there is one who withholds more than what is right, but it leads to poverty. Poverty. So, the, the person who is a miser or not generous he will be poor and eventually it says the generous soul will be made rich and he who waters own will also be watered himself so the one who gives will be it will be given to him um and and the one who who doesn't give will not receive the blessings like the one with the talent who hid it in the ground there's no blessing there um <clears throat> so uh, and this is what we see in the life of the Holy Virgin. When she found out that she um, was going to give birth to the Savior, she accepted, but she also found out what when the angel came to her. What, what else did the angel tell her? Another miracle. Who else was pregnant? Elizabeth, right? So what did she do? Instead of focusing on the greatest blessing that anyone on earth has received, from, from mankind, she heard, oh, um, my relative also is pregnant and she's very old. I have to go and serve her. She stayed for three months. Um, <clears throat> so th this is the one who, who brings with boldness. She was bold enough to not consider herself and, and to serve. Um, so in conclusion, in order to be blessed, we have to lay it down at the Lord's feet without putting limitations uh, and making mental cal calculations. Um, the second one is we have to ask, even to the point of being annoying, uh, with perseverance. The third, we have to manage faithfully with mindfulness, thinking about everything that is, a, this is a blessing from God. I have to be faithful. And, and the last one is to bring to the Lord with boldness so that he can reward with, with generosity. May the Lord grant us a life of blessing so that we not only be blessed, be a blessing to others. And glory be to him now and come to each of us. Blessed are